What's goody everybody? You might know me as Young Brat Doll or maybe Young Brat, maybe Sophia if you've been around for a really long time, maybe Sophia Aiko. Um, maybe you went to high school with me and you just know me as the girl who never talked to anybody and I'm sure I'm, I seemed pretty stuck up back then. Um, I'm gonna get into all of that later, but whether you're new or not, I have never properly introduced myself, so I would like to do that for the first time for this video. Hi, my name is Mariah, and I'm 18 years old. I live in Tucson, Arizona. If you're not religious, um, I just hope that you hear me out. The things that I've been through and where I'm at now, thanks to God. So, like I said, you probably know me as something other than my real name. From my first social media account, which was Facebook, I was 15 years old, maybe 16. It was my first social media account ever. I made my name Sofia Aiko. Um, and that, it just kept going. Like whether I, it was a new social media account or a new job, everybody knew me as something other than what I was. And it may not seem like a big deal because I know a lot of people kind of just use random names for their Instagram and stuff, but I wasn't doing it to be cool. I wasn't telling people to call me another name because I just didn't like my name. I didn't want anybody to have that type of connection to me. I didn't want anybody to have access to the real me, not even my real name. That's how isolated I felt in the world. That's how isolated I felt I needed to be in the world. I would like to take you through my journey and what got me to that point, what got me to my depression, what made me turn to the things that I did. So let's take it back. I wanna say maybe around the age of three, four, very young. Um, and I don't remember anything else from that time because who remembers when they're three or four years old, but the devil has a way of using things in your life to hurt you, whether it's later, whether it's at that time. And he made sure that I remembered the bad when I was that age. My mom had me when she was 16 and my dad was 18. So around this time, you know, they're still very young still have a lot to learn and all i could remember from around three or five years old was my dad and it was never anything good he would cheat and um he had a thing for strippers he would always get in relationships with strippers and like i said they were married but i just remember him coming home drunk all the time like past drunk <laughs> and he would be banging on the door at two and three in the morning. And my mom would just be on the other side of the door inside with me and she would just cry. She wouldn't open the door for him. She would just be right up against the door and fall to, to sit down and, and just cry. And I was little, you know, like I said, <clears throat> I was about three years old watching her go through that. Um, I remember things like them fighting a lot. I remember that for sure. I remember she would always grab the house phone because back then we had house phones and she would always throw that at him for whatever reason and the batteries would come out. Like those were the couple of memories that I had. And I remember he would take me to the girls houses. And of course I was too young to understand like um, I want to say this type of stuff was around four or five. Of course, I was too young to understand, but now that I look back, I remember him putting me into a room with the girl that he was sleeping with, with her daughter, because she had a daughter. And he would um, put us into the room and we would play and they would go do their thing in the other room. And I had no idea, you know, I was, I was just a little girl. But as I got older, you know, things started to make sense. And I'm sure my dad thought I was much too young to ever remember or to tell my mom once we got home, you know? But Satan has a way of using the bad things that have happened in your life against you. 
so that stuck with me all of those memories that i should have never remembered because i was much too young they stuck with me um so that was my first few years of life but the one thing that stayed true was my mom taking me to church my mom always took me to church every sunday every sunday morning every sunday night and every wednesday there came a day when my mom got a call and i remember we were sitting in the car and she was talking about my dad and he was locked up at the time and that was pretty normal for me my dad would get locked up quite often so you know i would just be like where's daddy for like a week and then he'd come home you know but this time i just saw it in her face i just saw all of the happiness flush out of her face and i knew something whatever that person that was on the other line had told her it crushed her so she got off the phone and we got home but i just remember she took me to her room when we got home from that car ride and um she sat me down on her bed and she told me your dad is in jail and i was like oh you know like when's he getting out and she said it's different this time it's a bigger jail and they keep you for longer <clears throat> Um, I was too little to understand what was going on at the time and she was trying to explain the best that she could and, and in the best light that she could but what was happening was my dad was going to be locked up for 8 to 10 years and he was going to prison for um... <clears throat> so around this time about 5 or 6 I think I was in kindergarten all I knew was that my dad was going to be away for a really long time. So that was like the first five or six years of my life. So my dad's locked up at this point. They're still married. Um, and we're going to visit him about every few months because he was locked up in Douglas, which is four hours away from where we stay at. And I just remember being a little girl and um, always going to visit him and being so excited to see him and just sitting in his lap the entire visit, like never leaving his side. I was on his lap the entire visit, every visit. And like as soon as I saw my dad, I would just run up and hold him. And I'm sorry. <laughs> so he would play cards with me. He taught me how to play everything from speed goldfish we would play dominoes checkers i learned all the board games always going to visit my dad in prison when i would be sitting on his lap he would tell me every time this is never going to happen again when i get out things are going to be different me and your mom are going to work out i'm going to be a good dad to you I'm gonna be a good husband to your mom. And I would just, I would just love to hear things like that. Like I was so young that I thought when my dad gets out, he's gonna be a preacher. Like that's how innocent and young I was. I was like, my dad's gonna be the best man of God when he gets out. He's gonna be a preacher. He's gonna be singing with me in children's church. Like that's how I pictured my dad in that jail suit. And he reassured me every time. It's going to be different. It, things are going to be better. And I trusted him. I trusted him with no doubt in my mind. Even while he was in prison, he was still keeping in contact with a few of the strippers that he had dated while he was with her. So my dad's locked up. He just got the biggest sentence he's ever got. And he's calling the strippers instead of my mom to see how their day is going. He's calling the strippers instead of his daughter to see how I'm doing. And it only took a couple more years for me to understand who my dad was, what he was doing. And within those couple of years, my mom filed for a divorce. At this time, I was old enough to understand all of that. 
Of course, I wasn't happy about it. What kid wants their parents to split up? And that was when her life started to go in a downward spiral. And that was also the time that I needed her the most. So my mom realized, okay, I have this house because my mom purchased a house as soon as she had me. It's the same house that she lives in now. But she realized I have a three bedroom house that I have to pay for by myself and two kids. Cause I also had my little brother. So she got that divorce and she started working two jobs i love him to death he's kind of almost like a, a son to me in a way like that's how much i love him I, I have so much love for my little brother and i think it's because for a while i was kind of like his little mom my mom was constantly working and once she realized okay well i want an education too she went to college full-time so now she's working two to three full-time jobs and going to college full-time with two kids back at home I learned to cook very young um, for me and my brother. As you can imagine, she was exhausted all the time. And as you can imagine, I didn't see her that much. She would be too tired to wake us up in the morning. I was getting us up in the morning with my little alarm clock and um, I would walk to my bus stop. I would make sure that Junior was up at the time that he needed to be and that he was at his bus stop. We'd take the bus to school, we'd get home and she usually wasn't home. I'd make us lunch and um, she would get home like around six or seven and be exhausted, just stressed so much. She would come home and just cram her mind with all of those college books and all of that information and always going through flashcards. She had no time for us. I remember there was like a few weeks where she was tired to where I had to prepare her dinner and take it to her room and literally feed her while she was studying. She was so consumed with everything else going on that she wouldn't even eat. She would forget to eat. So I would take food into the room for her and be like, mom, you need to eat. You know, I haven't seen you eat. I haven't, I haven't even seen you. Although she was just trying to make as best of a life as she could for us, she didn't realize that she was leaving me to myself. And I already didn't have a dad. I already felt so alone. <clears throat> but this was normal to me. It was normal for me to always be um, with my little brother. So my mom began to go crazy. As you can imagine, any person working even just three full-time jobs, add on top of that, going to college full-time and having two kids, she was going insane. The little bit of times that she did have on the weekend, she started to go out. So now I really didn't see my mom. Um, she would go out with her friends and I remember it just started with like slow drinking throughout the day, but she slowly turned into an alcoholic. Still up until this point, she was taking us to church every Sunday. So as I got older, I began to realize that this was not the way that life was supposed to be for a kid. I began to realize my mom's drinking problem. I began to realize I'm taking care of my brother I began to realize I'm alone. I'm alone in this world. And the more that she would take me to church as I was going through that, the more that I started to build the hate for God and for her. Because here she was telling me to do all these things and to live a righteous life and you can't do this and you can't have a boyfriend, you can't go this place, you're too young for this just constant rules rules and but here she was living a completely messed up life i began to to really resent my mom she was a hypocrite to me she didn't deserve any respect to me and this this anger got so strong towards her and so strong towards god that I started to rebel. And it was around sixth grade, you know, 12, 13. <sighs> you know, and it was never with students. It was never with students. It was always with adults. I was that kid that made 
In my sixth grade year, I remember making three teachers quit from Laughlin Middle School. And if you went to school with me at that time, you know I was a mess. I was such a mean little girl. I remember I made teachers cry all the time. There was this one teacher and she was such a sweet, like 35 year old blonde lady. And I saw cuts on her arm and I struggled with cutting myself, but I was good at hiding it. I always wore my sweaters, you know, I was that emo little girl. And I saw her cuts and I, I grabbed her arm and I lifted it up for the whole class to see. And I was like, look at her, she's depressed, she's emo, she cuts herself. And I never saw that teacher again. I began to love that feeling of just being evil. I felt something that made me feel powerful. My mom continued to take me to church and I told her I don't wanna go anymore and she would force me. So I, I began to hate God too. But one thing I couldn't deny was God was real. That my mom had definitely proven to me. So I couldn't just not believe, I couldn't be an atheist. That would be stupid because at the end of the day, I know that he is there. So what's the next best thing? What is the opposite of God? I turned to Satanism. I turned to witchcraft. And that hate just grew and grew and grew because nothing was changing. And now my mom had a new man in her life. And I hated him. It's my stepdad today, but... um. I hated him for a very long time and so now she on top of everything else that she was confusing me with now she's having sex and I had never witnessed my mom with another man besides my dad before yes she was going out and partying but it was always with girls that I knew of and now this man is coming around he doesn't treat her good and I was like mom what are you doing here you are hitting me for everything that I do wrong and she was living a worse life that I had ever even thought of. So that witchcraft quickly became aimed towards her. I wanted my mom dead. The witchcraft began slowly. But... I remember being so miserable in life and so mad at her. I remember being so mad at her that I would, every time that we got into the car, I would pray over it. And I would just speak curses into that car every single time that we got into it. I didn't care if I died in that car with her. I wanted her dead. So every time that we got into a car, I would pray over it. Obviously not to the right power, but just kill her. Kill her in this car right in front of me. And if you have to take my life too, then go ahead. So be it, I don't really care. Every every night I would I would practice my craft. I would I would get the I would get the ingredients that I needed for my rituals. I would do everything that I could to let those demons into my mom's life. But because my mom always did have God in her life, regardless of the sins that she was making, my mom always did keep God in her life. And because of that, that witchcraft bounced back on me. I got everything that I spoke into my mom's life I got in, in return. So instead of her going through hell or her dying, I started to see demons. I started to be tormented every day. I couldn't sleep at night. You're allowing a different 
realm into your realm. It's the spiritual realm. And I had opened that door. That was a very big part of my life for a very long time. And that whole time I was just giving Satan more and more power into my life. And I didn't realize that seeing those things at night wasn't even the beginning of the torment. I began to experiment with drugs because I thought, this is literally how I would think. I am going to try every drug out there until I find something that makes me feel alive, until I find something that makes me feel happy. Weed has always been my drug of choice. If you know me, you know that very well. But I've always been a very spiritual person. Trips were something that I experimented a lot with too. I remember I, I, remember I did acid for the first time in a movie theater. I wasn't aware that the trip was going to be eight hours. I had to go right back home to my mom's after, and it was only an hour and a half movie. And that was the first time I had ever taken acid. Luckily, it hadn't kicked in quite right. So I was able to make it to my room and just lock myself in there. And I tripped the whole eight hours in my room by myself. But I realized that I had power in that realm. Because I had done witchcraft, because I had already allowed the demons and all of these spirits access into my life, when I would trip, I was automatically in that world. Automatically seeing spirits, automatically seeing demons. And that's to this day. If I were to do shrooms right now, if I were to do acid, I'm automatically in the spiritual world. But something about me was so intrigued about it. I loved it. I loved having power. I loved that... I wanted, I wanted to keep tripping and keep going until I was able to unlock my third eye. I wanted to be able to be, I wanted to feel power. So for a long time, trips, while I thought they were opening my mind, I was just allowing the devil and those demons more and more and more access into my mind. To the point where I didn't have to be tripping anymore to see them. So eventually, I grew up, I guess, a little bit, and I realized that my mom was just human, and she made mistakes like everybody else. And unfortunately, I had to suffer from those mistakes, but I forgave her. And I love her and she has changed so much now, by the way. I'm so grateful that God turned her life around because I feel like I have so much more help now. Pretty much from the age of 12 until then, and around this time, I'm like 16, 17. I'm just living how I want. Not really caring about if I die, where am I going to go? That didn't matter to me. And it was worse than most people because I actually knew about the things of God. I actually knew the consequences already. And I was still living like that. That fatherly love that I had missed out on in my childhood. If you know me, you know that I'm never single. <laughs> this is the first time in my life since I was 12 that I'm single because I always felt like I needed that comfort. I needed a man to, to be there for me. So at this point, I've pretty much experimented with just about everything that you can experiment with. I tried being bi for a little while. So I tried that. I tried my lust with men. I was in a very abusive relationship. I was much more abusive than he was i'm gonna say that right now i tried drugs i tried witchcraft i tried satanism i mean i was just like where else could i turn nothing is keeping me happy nothing is filling this void in my heart something needs to change i put myself through everything 
when God was just reaching his hand out the entire time. This last Sunday, I was just so depressed. I was so down. And I didn't go to church that Sunday morning. I was planning to, and just like the week before that, and the week before that, and the week before that, and the month before that, I was saying I'm gonna go to church tomorrow. Didn't happen, didn't happen, didn't happen. I wasn't forcing myself to, I was just letting myself live however I wanted to. But that Sunday night, something pretty drastic happened. And I was like, that's it. I need God. I just I just want to hear from God. Just just for an hour. I just need some hope because I don't want to kill myself. I don't want to feel like this anymore. So, I called my mom and I asked her if she was going to church, and she was. So, I went and keep in mind again this was last Sunday. Um, the preacher, I had never seen him before. This last Sunday, I was just so depressed. I was so down. And I didn't go to church that Sunday morning. I was planning to, and just like the week before that, and the week before that, and the week before that, and the month before that, I was saying, I'm gonna go to church tomorrow. Didn't happen, didn't happen, didn't happen. I wasn't forcing myself to, I was just letting myself live however I wanted to. But that Sunday night, something pretty drastic happened. And I was like, that's it. I need God, I just, I just wanna hear from God, just, just for an hour. I just need some hope because I don't want to kill myself. I don't want to feel like this anymore. So I called my mom and I asked her if she was going to church and she was. So I went and keep in mind again, this was last Sunday. Um, the preacher, I had never seen him before. And he was giving a good sermon. He was speaking to me. God was speaking to me. And I was like, thank you, God. Like, this is what I needed. This was that little boost that I needed. But I knew that once I left that church, all of the pain from the world was going to be right back where it was. I was going to have to deal with my feelings. I was going to have to deal with my depression on my own. And as the service was coming to an end, I was like, God... I don't want to go back out into this world without you. I need you here with me because if you're not, I don't know how much longer I have here. So he did altar call, which was normal for me, you know? Every service has an altar call. If you don't know what that is, it's just at the end of the service. They ask people to raise their hand if they want to give their life to God and if they want to be prayed over. So the preacher said, is there anybody in here who would like to give their life to Jesus? And I had my head bowed down because that's what you're supposed to do when they do altar call. You're supposed to look down so that you don't make anybody feel embarrassed if they do raise their hand. I seen out of the corner of my eye a hand go up over here, a hand go up over there. And I felt something in my spirit for the first time like, you need to and i was like hell no i'm not about to raise my hand in this church with this thousand people watching me and like looking like a fool i wasn't about to do that i said no god i will never do that i will never raise my hand at an altar call and then the pastor said backsliders people who were once with god but you're not following him anymore the people who need him and I just felt God tug in my spirit. I felt him, I felt a voice so powerful 
so unexplainable in my spirit that said, Mariah, do it. So I raised my hand. I had never heard that voice before. Keep in mind, I'm very used to the spiritual realm. As I said, I would constantly trip just to see those, just to hear from that other side. I would see demons. I would hear them talk to me. But I had never heard a voice like this so clear so distinct so powerful i couldn't not listen so i raised my hand and i went up there and i prayed the sinner's prayer you know god forgive me for my sins and make me clean again and he says everybody that's at the altar stand up and there's a lot of people praying at this point you know it's not just the people that wanted to repent everybody's praying at the altar so everybody stands up and there's a good hundred people standing up and then everybody that's still sitting down is all behind us in their chairs so i'm gonna try to put a picture up so you could see like i'm bowing down at the altar he's preaching and there's people behind me still sitting in their chairs so the preacher comes down from the steps and he puts his hand on a little girl and he prophesies over her and if you don't know what it is to have somebody prophesy over you it's not really the preacher speaking anymore it's almost like speaking in tongues they it's god speaking through them and you know because you know it's not the preacher speaking anymore just like demon possession was and still is a thing um god's spirit also takes over people to speak through them just like demon possession it's like god takes over i know he had never spoke to that girl before but here he was telling her uh, saying everything that she had been through god was gonna help her and i was just like wow my whole life i had seen people being prophesied over you know from random times and oh you're gonna be a great preacher of god one day and oh you're gonna be a wonderful woman of god and you're gonna do this and this and god's gonna help you go here but i had never been prophesied over and i had been in church since i was born so the preacher is walking to and from across the altar putting his hands on people prophesying over them and he passes right by me and as he passed by me i was like oh lord something's about to happen i felt a presence again that i had never felt before so he turned back around and he looked at me and he's like what is your name and i was scared i was about to answer sophia i wanted to answer sophia i didn't want him to know my real name i wanted to answer sophia i didn't want him to know my real name and I said, Mariah. And he spoke words into my life that only God could speak. It was not the preacher speaking anymore. He brought up things from my life that I had never told anybody. He brought up my witchcraft. He literally read me like a book inside and out everybody else was just a quick you know hey you're gonna do this you're gonna but no when he prophesied over me he grabbed me and he closed his eyes and i could just tell that that was not him speaking anymore it was my god in her mind and her heart and to begin to know you as never before in jesus name let's give god praise for that and thank him Just stay here. I'm not, I'm not done. What's your name, dear? I'm sorry? Mariah, how old are you? 18. Do you go to church here? Okay. Amen. I'm just going to pray for you, Mariah. Yea, the Lord would say unto thee, my daughter, the enemy has sought to sift thee like wheat. Much witchcraft and unbelief has come into your mind concerning me, saith the Lord. Some of this is doors you have opened and voices you have allowed to speak. But I would say, hear my voice and hear my word. You are accepted, saith the Lord. I have not rejected you. 
I am not mad at you. You are not an accident. You were born for such a time as this. I have created you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made in my image, saith the Lord. You shall be a woman of God, a woman of virtue, a woman, yea, even as the lamb that is closest to the shepherd. This is my heart for you, my daughter. But you must cooperate with me in your heart. You, that's where it comes from, not in duty, not in church duty, but from your heart saying, Lord, I want to love you know you and follow you if you do this it will not be a chore it will not be a burden it will not be a performance you have to perform but it will be love my eyes burn like fire and that fire is my love for you saith the lord and I want you to see this. I want you to know this because I've, I've created you to be a firebrand. I've created you to be a powerful witness uh, and a powerful testimony for me. I have given you gifting and talent, and that is meant for what I want to do in and through your life. Do not let the enemy have his way. Choose me, and I will be your ultimate defender, saith the Lord. Let's give God praise and thank him for that. Oh. Praise the Lord. Brother here, I'm going to give you this. And I broke. I don't cry in front of people. This video, you might be like, wow, she's very emotional. But if you know me, you know, I put up a very strong persona. And I broke in front of that 400, 300 people because God read me. He knew exactly what I was feeling. He knew exactly what I was going through. He knew exactly what I was struggling with. And he was there to help. I'm so happy to say that I finally, truly got saved that night. I spoke in tongues for the first time. And if you don't know what that is, maybe I can make a separate video on it because that has been you know, usually when you go to church and you come out, you face the, the temptations of this world and everything and the hurt of this world. And it just, Satan just crushes you. As soon as you're out of church, he just crushes you. But when you have that Holy Spirit on your side and you're able to speak in tongues against him, man, you feel like, you really do feel like nothing could stop you. And... I'm going to insert um, the audio because I got that whole preaching from that night on CD. I went into the I went into their studio room and I asked them if I could have that whole preaching on CD so that I could listen to my prophecy over and over and over again. I want to hear those words from God over and over and over again. The devil is the reason that there is so much ugly in this world. And he has convinced us to think that it is God who wants this. It is God who put rape on this earth. It is God who put us in sadness. God allowed these things to happen, but no, that is a lie from hell. If things were the way that God intended, this world would be so much different. I think it would still be a garden. We would have everything that we needed on the trees, but we built this world. We brought the corruption into this world. My God is great. My God is almighty. He is powerful. And if he could save me, he could save anybody. Because I've done some things in this life that I thought I could never be forgiven for. I know that things aren't going to get easier because life doesn't get easier. And I know that it might actually get harder because the devil sees now that I'm awake and that his lies and his temptations are not, they don't have a hold of me anymore. So he's probably going to press harder now. I still have things that I struggle with. I haven't smoked in four days, which is the longest that I've been sober in two years. I cuss. I... I, I struggle with everything just like any other teenager but I know that God is now with me in this battle and it's time for me to take up my cross and to to just fight through it because life is gonna be a fight no matter what you might as well be fighting the good fight people will always let you down 
There is not a single person out there that is not going to let you down because they are human. They can't help it. No matter how much they love you, no matter how much they care for you, they will let you down. You will let yourself down. Never trust in you. You are not strong. You are human. You need something to rely on. Don't trust in drugs because it leaves you feeling low. Nothing fills that void the way that God does. No man, no woman, no thing, no clothes, no amount of money. I'm just very grateful that he finally broke through to me and he spoke to me the way that he did. I've gone through a lot and nobody really knows about it. I think I've always just gave off a really stuck up and strong um, vibe. And it's time to put that aside because everybody needs help. Everybody is hurting. Everybody is struggling. I needed to share this because my whole life is going to turn around. I want to start doing things different because if you want to see different, you got to move different. And that's where I'm at. I don't care who I have to lose. I don't care what I have to stop doing, what I have to stop listening to, what I have to any of that i don't care because at the end of the day i know that god's plan is so much greater than mine i know that he has purpose for my life and he spoke that into me in that in that prophecy i have talent he said that he gave me and i've always felt that i've always felt that i have had talent and that i have leadership qualities but i know that god's gonna put that into action the devil's just trying to attack me all the time now that i've finally made this decision because i had to move out of where i was staying I didn't want to be in that relationship anymore. I knew that God needs to work in both of us. And I just want to live according to God's plan. And if that's not his plan, then so be it. And if it is, then, you know, he'll bring him back into my life when it's time. But I know for right now, it's not the time. So I had to move out of where I was staying. I had to come move back in with my dad. I'm in a room that you could see was used for storage i i'm somewhere that i'm not comfortable with i've been sober and that has been probably the second hardest thing for sure because i'm so used to smoking all day i haven't been able to eat um but i know that god's gonna help me through this and i know that things are gonna get better and i know that my sacrifices are not for nothing I know that I'm going to be blessed one day for these things and for putting aside all of the BS. I might cry for a little bit now, but my end reward will be so great. And that's all I care about. If you stay till the end, I'm so thankful. Um, I hope that somehow maybe this spoke to you a little bit. I want to start living for God. And I hope that you guys are willing to go on this journey with me and to be patient with me as well because I'm not perfect. We're living in the end times. It's time to make a difference. It's time to take a stand. I'm sorry about the lighting. The sun was out for the beginning half, but not anymore. But I just want to give you hope. I just want to let you know that whoever you are, boy, girl, whatever situation you may find yourself in, Whatever the devil is throwing at you, whatever lies, whatever you have done in your life, God loves you. God loves you more than anything. You are worth something. You have talent. You have something to offer this world. Every single last one of us has something that the other person doesn't. And you can contribute your talent to this world. I know what it's like to every night contemplate. Do I want to be alive anymore? Do I want to wake up for another day? I know what it's like to be there. And I just want to let you know that only God can get you out of there. Only God. Everything else is not going to last. I promise you, we live in a fallen world. We live in a sinner's world. He is the only light. He is the only, he is the prince of peace. He is the only peace. He's the only balance in this world, in this corrupt and ugly world.
I really want to see my generation thrive. I really want to see my generation break every chain from the past generations. We need to be the generation of change. All you need to do is repent and ask him into your life. That's all it takes. And from there, he will take care of the rest. God did not disclude anybody, nobody. I don't care if you're black, if you're white, if you're gay, if you're straight, if you're up, if you're down, if you're, if you're a murderer, if you've never even cursed in your life, I don't care. God loves you. God created you for something. God created you with a purpose. And let's start finding out what that purpose is. I hope you guys continue with me on this journey. And again, I'm going to struggle. I'm going to fall. But God's going to pick me right back up. And um, hopefully some of you guys decide to join me on this journey too. I love you guys. I'm so grateful for you guys. And um, there's going to be a lot more content coming. I'm done. I'm done being sad. I'm done being depressed. I'm done letting things hold me back. God is going to do some amazing things in my life. And I can't wait for you guys to see. Um, I hope you guys have a good night or a good day, whatever time it is when you watch this. And yeah, God bless.